Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're talking about the Harrington and Richardson Model 922. A rather svelte little gun with a nine shot cylinder chambered in 22 long rifle, which means of course it will also fire 22 short, 22 CB caps, etc. Um, this gun was produced by Harrington and Richardson from 1927 for about 50 years, although there was a short break in the 60s where they weren't in production. And um, it was an inexpensive, sort of every man's gun, just a, uh, a tackle box, toolbox, truck gun. You know, something you might keep on your tractor while you were plowing the fields or used for target shooting or casual plinking, small game hunting. It was not, um, it was never intended for particularly serious purposes. I mean, this is my, nobody's idea of a self-defense gun. It is a double action, although really you should treat it as a single action <laughs> because the double action is pretty terrible. Um, Anyway, let's have a look at this on the tabletop. The H&R Model 922 was initially introduced with a 6-inch octagonal barrel as the only variation, although this one has the later 4-inch round barrel. Um, it does not possess a swing-out cylinder. As I said, this was an economy gun, and swing-out cylinder costs more money. Um, there is a port here which can be used to load the gun, but really, uh, most of the literature says it is to verify whether the gun is loaded or not. And since the only ejector rod is the cylinder pin, uh, loading it with the cylinder, loading it and unloading it with the cylinder in the gun is a dubious proposition, especially given that there is no half cock notch. To check the cylinder, you have to hold the hammer back slightly, just enough to disengage the lock. So typically this was understood to be loaded and unloaded by removing the cylinder, which is pretty easy to do. You just press this button, pull the cylinder pin slash ejector rod out, and the cylinder will fall out if you are not careful. Then you can use the cylinder pin to eject the empties. As stated, it holds nine rounds. There is a lip around the edge of the cylinder to in case you have a case head blow up or something, which, you know, happened seldom, but more often when the cases were just copper than now when they're pretty much brass. To reinsert it, you just reverse the procedure. And you sometimes have to cock the hammer or the lock will get in the way. Reinsert the pin, press it in, and Bob's your uncle. Um, this gun was made in 1949, so that makes it a late first model, although some would argue that it should be the second model because they changed the shape of the grip frame and changed the grips from walnut to uh, this uh, appears to be plastic, cast plastic of some kind. And uh, the change in the grip frame was to make the grip frame the same as the Model 922, which was the top brake, sort of the, uh, the, the Gucci version. To remove the grip, you simply unscrew the single screw that retains it. which threads in quite a long way, revealing this very weird frame shape. I have no idea what they were thinking. As you can see, the mainspring is a coil spring and double action, which it's a rim fire, so you don't want to just let it go. The double action is not horribly gritty or grunchy or anything, but it is 11 and a half pounds, and it's really not all that good. Interestingly, this is the single action sear, and in a sense, the single action trigger. 
when you cock the gun, the trigger being pressed fully back trips that sear and releases the hammer for single action firing. Now, back to the grip frame, this actually has these grooves cut across it, almost as if there was going to be a grip shaped like the handle. I've never seen one. Doesn't mean they don't exist, but I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. So let's, um, a little more screwdriver porn for you. As I said, the screw is quite unnecessarily long, <laughs> so it takes a minute to screw it back in. Now, some ergonomic notes. Really? Boy, that's a long screw. Some ergonomic notes. The shape of the grip itself is quite good, reasonably comfortable, suited, I imagine, to a variety of hands. But the gap between the guard and the trigger guard and the frame will not admit a human finger. And later guns, in fact, later models, actually had a metal curved metal piece in here to give your finger a place to come to rest without possibly being jammed up in there. I don't know how great a danger that was, frankly. Um, despite all steel construction and a solid frame, uh, the gun weighs 23.7 ounces, so it's not, not unhandy, and as you can see, is, is quite small in the frame size and stuff. And this was just a very handy gun. The sights are nothing to write home about. There's this small notch in the rear and a target style front, which could optionally be equipped, I'm told, with a gold bead. Seems like gilding the lily. And uh, the sights are usable. Let's see if we can get a look at that. And that's about the best I'll give them. <laughs> they are usable. But the gun is a single action, is reasonably accurate. While the double action trigger pull is quite heavy, the single action lets off at a nice crisp three, three pounds. And uh, it's quite good for that. And really, as I said, you really should consider this a single action revolver because I can't think of, given its intended uses of plinking, small game hunting, and vermin, vermin control and like that, I can't really imagine a scenario where you would want to use double, fire the gun double action. And of course, if you were relying on this as a self-defense pistol, the double action is useful, but um, it's not at all easy to obtain good accuracy with it. That would require quite a bit of practice. And no, as one reader commented, no, I am not going to turn this into a snubby. <laughs> Now, over the years, there were numerous changes. One I already mentioned is the bizarre grip frame. Um, another is that they shortened the cylinder pen because it really doesn't need to be this long. Change from the octagon to the round barrel was a cost-saving measure, I'm sure. Just made life easier in general. And um, other than that, it's, it's very typical of H&R revolvers. It's a solid frame, all steel, separate trigger guard secured by pins, and uh, really just a very simple, robust, useful little gun. And yes, loading and unloading is very slow, but the thing is, for the sort of gun this is meant, <clears throat> you're really likely, not likely to need more than nine shots. I mean, if you're small game hunting, you know, you're probably not going to shoot more than nine squirrels or bunnies in one outing. And uh, if you're plinking, well, then it's no trouble to remove the cylinder for loading and unloading. As I said, your initial loading, it is possible to do it through the gate. But really, like I said, given that there's no half cock notch or anything, it's probably simpler just to pull the cylinder. Anyway... Nice, utilitarian, useful little gun. They were always quite inexpensive. And uh, were quite popular. Years ago, I commented rather wonderingly that I didn't own a 22 caliber repeating handgun. And a very good friend of mine, 
sent me this. And uh, it fills the bill. H&R, from their inception, produced affordable guns aimed at the low end of the market. But for the most part, these were solid, reliable, reasonable quality firearms. You know, good for the price, as they say. And they're pretty robust, solid steel frames, solid lock works. Um, there, there was a couple of their top brake models that were I don't much care for because everyone I've ever had broke. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they're 100 years old, so that may be unfair of me. Anyway, um, these were in production from 1927 until 1961. Uh, they were somewhat eclipsed in the 50s by the introduction of a swing-out cylinder model. But um, after a hiatus in the 60s, when they were out of production, they went back into production. Apparently, there was a demand for them, and they remained in production until, I believe, the 1970s. Uh, such guns today are not hard to find. They made a bloody lot of them. And really good quality examples can still be had if you shop around for $175 to $200. And, um, you know, that's all right. I think it still represents to this day a good value for the money for what it is. So, if you like the video, and if you're still watching, you probably did, please hit like. It really helps Facebook, excuse me, YouTube know that I'm here and that people are interested. Also, subscribe if you want to see more like this. Uh, and a comment in the comment section is also useful to the artificial stupid of YouTube. If uh, you'd like to support me via my Patreon account, there's a link to that in the description below. All of this costs money, guns, ammunition, everything. So, you know, kick a buck a month or two my way. It all helps more than you realize. Anyway, nice, solid, cheap and cheerful little gun. The Harrington Richardson 922. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.